Welcome to episode 373 of Geek Town Radio. I am back this week with... To infinity and beyond! Matt, how are you doing? I'm good, David. How are you? I'm doing very well. So, uh, it's been a few weeks since you've been on. What have you been up to? I started a new show on uh, Apple TV Plus called Hello Tomorrow. Yes. The season is, I think, going out. There's like six or seven episodes that are out already, and there's probably eight or ten or something. I remember you described the show a few weeks ago on Geek Town. It's basically, yeah, like a before Fallout type of scenario. Uh, You've got sort of your main character, and he's trying to sort of sell this life to people, trying to sell them this sort of like, hey, I can offer you a better tomorrow today sort of thing yeah it's it's trying to sell timeshares to the moon isn't it basically that's the yeah see he meets a few people that are like down in their luck or you know just general sales and and that sort of stuff so he's trying to sell them that it does very much have that sort of particular setting sort of before the bomb went off and destroyed everything in in the world to fall out absolutely there's even an actual character they show at one point that does look a bit sort of fallout-esque so they're very much kind of leaning into that which is uh, quite cool watch the first two episodes I like it I think it's good it hasn't like you know blown the doors off or whatever and I don't think it's bad either it's certainly got me sort of hooked and intrigued because I want to see what this guy sort of got up his sleeve and there's some other things going on in the show and uh, how like the sales pitches continue to go and, and that type of stuff but I did think the first episode was slightly slower than I would have preferred possibly there was a few too many kind of not moments that lingered but scenes that sort of like okay you've reached the point of this scene can, can you like just naturally move forward a bit more but that yeah. was sort of like the only sticking point for the first episode I, I didn't really notice that as much in the second one but there's a bit more going on obviously because the story progresses itself forward but no it's got that kind of prestige quality of the Apple shows I don't think it's as good as like some of the top top shows but yeah I think it's another great Apple show it's it's quite short the episodes are 30 minutes so one thing that helps the slower parts of some of the episodes is if you're there for a shorter amount of time but you're still watching a slower paced episode it's a lot easier to get through as opposed to an hour episode which yes. is a bit slower so no I'm intrigued to see where it goes again it's got that like fallout kind of aesthetic so I think that's kind of interesting I like it so far how many episodes have you seen? I, I have only seen the opening episode so far and I agree with you it is quite slow and my issue with it was it is a comedy drama and it's not drama enough to be a drama it's not comedy enough to be a comedy and I don't think it quite finds its feet in that opening episode I love the set of it i really yeah. like that retro future setting for it there's no sort of clear indication of exactly where it's going and that has put me in a position of like i do want to sort of see more of it but it's not up there you know i've had a bunch of other things to watch so it's not something uh-huh. i've gone yeah. back to yet like you say they are only half hour episodes so i do want to go back and just try a little bit more of it and see whether i get into it a little bit more but i struggled a little bit with that opening episode just because the pace of it and it didn't seem to be quite sure exactly what it wanted to be but the setting's really interesting there are some interesting ideas in there but i i don't yeah. know just didn't seem to develop enough in that opening episode to make me kind of go oh i must watch the next one so i do intend to go back to it again and i may change my entire opinion on it but at the moment it's on my list of things i need to start up but there are mm-hmm. other things that have kind of bumped it out of the way and it's not kind of clawed its way back up yet so yeah but now i watched the trailer i thought that i, I watched like a oh. bunch of trailers this week on apple because there was like four or five shows that are sort of popped up that look kind of interesting some that i knew that were already out there like liaison which looks quite good and a few others as well and i was like okay i'm gonna just pick one of these and start watching yeah. um The reason I did actually start with this show as opposed to the other ones is it had the shorter amount of episodes and the shorter episodes as well. Because it had like six or seven, I think, and they're only 30 minutes. So it it felt easier to to sort of approach that. So, yeah, but no, there's a few shows on Apple that I I need to sort of go to and um, start checking out, as I said, Liaison, which is kind of this like special op sort of area, you know, that I I, I quite like that stuff. So I'm curious about that one as well. But yeah, I'll continue watching this, you know, just chip away at the 30 minute episodes and uh, hopefully get cool up assuming i continue to enjoy the show obviously so yes yeah but uh i i do agree with some of the criticisms that you've that you said i think that i think episode two sort of pushes it past that a little bit and sort of right. gets on with it Good, with things okay. a bit more so speaking of things that aren't short hogwarts legacy which is a game i've been playing for a couple of weeks i'm not exaggerating at all when i tell you 
this game is enormous. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely enormous and very, very deep in terms of its mechanics and how things fit into things. Because this is kind of like the, the open world Hogwarts game that fans have been wanting for 20 years and, and that type of stuff. And I'm not sort of like a fan per se of the Harry Potter or the Hogwarts yeah. IP, but it's one that's interesting. One that I, you know, I watch the films, I'm I remember enjoying the them when right. they came out. Yeah. When they came out. This very much disconnects from the films. Uh, it's set in the 1800s, so way before Harry was there or anything. Uh, in fact, you get to create your own character, so you can you know choose male or female, or whatever you know, whatever skin color or hair you want to choose, or you can customize your clothes, all that type of stuff. There's a lot in this game, but the thing I would say is, if you want to play this properly and really dig into stuff, it is very, very, very rewarding when you do that because it will take a lot of time to get things where you want them to be, and if you have a good browser in the menus or see what you can do in the room of requirement which is I advise you spend a lot of time in room of requirement once you get it unlocked there's a lot of things that you can do that will really like help you as a player so yeah I mean yeah you can just kind of like hey do the classes do the side quest do the story and get through it but as I've kind of really gotten into the weeds of this game and sort of oh this thing unlocks this so I'm going to put in the effort to get that so I can get this other thing which leads into this other thing and there's a really really rewarding kind of loop to the gameplay right of where I've been a bit more encouraged like oh actually explore the castle and unlock stuff and get rewards for it and make my character stronger and get more potions and and, and spells and plants as well i can't quite explain all of the systems and stuff because there's, there's a lot in there even like some some new stuff i unlocked in the last couple of days there's a certain thing to where you can unlock an appearance you can then find different clothing throughout the world but instead of certain other games like i'll, I'll use assassin's creed for example so in like assassin's creed i think it's odyssey one of the newer ones you find a piece of gear that's different but you don't like the look of it but you're stuck with it whereas right. in this game because obviously you've got more magic going on and you can get away with certain things if you find a piece of gear that doesn't look like something you want to wear but you've got an appearance unlocked because of what your character's wearing you can equip the newer gear the, the better stuff that you've got which might, might have some traits or some defense stuff or you know some good things in there you can then equip that but then through you know magic change the appearance of those clothes items to make it look like you've got on the stuff that you want right but then still keep those traits that's good so instead of your character having like weird masks or things like that on you can it's a bit of a system to get into but once you do it, it's very very good story is great as well i've not really done a lot of the story for the last 20 hours because i've just been doing so much side stuff but uh, it's it's a brilliant game. Uh, the broomstick flying is really nice. Combat's really good. Once you sort of figure out how you want to play as well, you can combine different spells and stuff. So it's very, very big, but it's very rewarding. What have you seen from Hogwarts Legacy? I've sort of seen bits and pieces of it. I haven't picked it up yet, mainly because I have an aversion to paying sort of anything over about £30 for a PC game. And, you know, I'd be playing uh -huh. it on PC and it's currently 50 quid on the Steam store. Um, I do like the look of it. And I it's one of those things that, you know, 50 quid is a lot of money to spend on a game when you're like, unless I know I'm going to really be into it so you know if it's something that mm. i've played previous versions of like the dragon age games or something like that i kind of have an aversion to paying that much for for a game but i am starting to get to the point where i'm looking for something new to play and part of me thinks i'm probably gonna cave before it hits a sale you know so so <laughs> i i may end up buying it over this week and uh trying it out but yeah I mean, mm -hmm. from what you're describing the fact that you are saying that it is extremely big and I do like those sort of action RPG things a lot so I think I'll probably enjoy it I'm very much in the same position as you as I, I like the movies and stuff I've never read the books but you know mm. so I'm not completely invested in that world but I think it's an interesting enough game so I might end up picking it up we'll, we'll see I think they did a very smart thing by not tying this into Harry Potter Absolutely. although we don't really get those sort of licensed film like this isn't the 90s you don't really get those, those sort of licensed yeah. games which some of those some some of those are good and there were the, the sort of but classic some, there's some of them really uh, aren't. the, yes. the um, things the Harry Potter 2 game on, on PS1 which has become quite iconic for certain reasons yeah. so uh, but yeah, if you want a game that's going to keep you busy <laughs> yeah. this will definitely do that to you okay, so okay. last thing I wanted to mention 
Jason was kind of highlighting this week's episode of Servant, which is season four, episode eight. Won't go into spoilers, and there are some very big spoilery things that happen in this episode because we're getting towards the end game now. We only have two left, which means about an hour of the story. Just wanted to highlight uh, Nell Tiger Free's performance. She plays Leanne on the show, who you could say is possibly the main character. Some think Dorothy, some think that Leanne is. Her performance this week was there was like a specific thing she has to do with her performance this week. It was really, really quite an incredible performance from from her this week. And uh, the rest of the cast were really, really great as well. But this episode really kind of gets particularly into what's going on with Leanne and very much pushes towards the end game of the show, which you, you have to do now because you only have about an hour left. Well, so yeah. So I'm curious to see how that wraps up with two episodes to go. But yeah, that's what I've been up to this week or recently. How about yourself, David? I've been going through a number of different TV shows and some games as well. Well, uh, I should mention Nell Tiger Free interviewed her ages and ages ago, back when I think the only thing she'd done was she was the the daughter that got killed off in Game of Thrones, the Baratheon daughter, mm. and that's like literally the only thing that she'd done at that point. And it's great because she's been in a whole bunch of other things since then. And, you know, it's really nice seeing her take off and do things because she wasn't in Game of Thrones for very long either. I don't remember her in the show actually. Yeah, she was the sister to Joffrey and. Um, oh, that's not a good thing to. Yeah, be. no, no, exactly. <laughs> and she she ends up getting poisoned. I think spoilers for Game of Thrones, but at this point, I mean, you know. Yes, I think she ends up getting poisoned, but that was like the only thing she'd done when we interviewed her. We're like, well, you know, they threw her in the interview hmm. room and we kind of went, we'll ask her as many questions as she can, but it's kind of limited because she's only on screen for like 15 minutes in total, I think, something like that. But yeah. Hmm, nice. In terms of stuff I've been doing, Outer Banks, I've got to the end of the third season. I do wonder whether they'd kind of crafted that third season so they could potentially bring it to an end if they knew it wasn't renewed or bring it back because there is a tag on the very final episode, which sets up the fourth season because the third season does conclude this sort of arc of the treasure that they're going after. If you've not seen Outer Banks, I'd describe it as being the Goonies, but with the cast of a CW show. It's basically a big action adventure with a bunch of kids going after some pirate treasure. That's essentially what it is. These three seasons sort of span them going after one or two particular bits of treasure. The third season concludes that story, but they've set up the fourth season as something which could be slightly different so we'll see how it goes with the fourth season because it has already been renewed i mean netflix in very rare move actually announced that it was renewed without saying it's renewed and it's a final season they just said it's renewed and he's coming back for another season so uh, as i said, said last week they did a huge launch party in la for it as well when the third season aired so it seems to be going down incredibly well either that or one of the producers has something on one of the execs at netflix but i, I don't know what it is but it's a really fun show and uh, third season's great I mean, pretty much continues the fun from the last couple of seasons. It's way better than you think it probably should be. Very, very enjoyable. So if you haven't seen it, go and check out The Outer Banks on Netflix because it is really worth watching. It's a great action adventure series. Have you caught any of that? No, I've never seen any of it at all. I've maybe seen a trailer, but apart from that, no. It looks like it's going to be a sort of very, very teen drama-y sort of thing, but there's a lot of fun and adventure and stuff in there as well. It's way better than it you sort of feel like it probably mm. should be but yeah, yeah that's been brilliant there is a new show called the diplomat which is on alibi it's actually an original alibi series it's set in barcelona i believe and it's based around i don't know why it's not called the diplomats actually because it is based around a bunch of diplomats at the british embassy in barcelona and them dealing with things that occur in the town with tourists and there's been a girl that's been murdered so it's got sort of that mystery kind of running through it about what's exactly happening and there's sort of stuff with the criminal underworld as well perfectly well put together as a drama it feels a little bit cheap if I'm being completely honest it's sort of I don't know you expect a slightly higher quality I can't quite place my finger on exactly what it is the acting's really good. The directing, I think, is fine. I don't know whether... It, I, I I just... I don't know what it is. It just feels like there wasn't quite as much money spent on it as maybe there probably should have been. But the story mm. itself, I think, works quite well. It's written by Ben Richards, who has done things like uh, Cobra, the Sky series, and he did Show Trial, which was that miniseries. He worked on The Tunnel and Fortitude, and, and he was 
one of the writers on Spooks as well. So very, very experienced writer. And uh, yeah, like I said, the story itself is perfectly fine and it's very, very watchable. You know, if you like those sort of ITV crime drama type things, this is on Alibi, and it, but it is in that kind of vein. Called The Diplomat and worth going to have a look at if you've not seen that. The big thing, of course, TV-wise, Mandalorian came back this week for its third season. I've been pretty much continuation of, I mean, we knew what was going to happen. If you didn't see Book of Boba Fett, you're going to be very confused. And I did wonder whether they were going to do a kind of recap on that, but no, they jumped straight in. No no explanation mm-hmm. of why the fat Glo- Grogu is there and why he has a completely different ship. So jump straight into that. Enjoyed the opening episode quite a lot. This arc is sort of on the quest of him going back to Mandalore to try and reclaim his Mandalorian title is essentially the setup for this season. Somebody did describe this show as being very video gamey. It's like he has an ultimate goal to get to, but keeps on getting distracted by side quests. <laughs> and it really yeah, is like that. that. <laughs> <laughs> it really is yeah. like that, this TV show. Every season is that, you know. There is, okay, I've got to get mm. Grogu to the Jedi, and that's like the arc for, what, the first two seasons. And then it ends up like just him getting distracted to go and help these people or go and get something or do something else and it's it is like that all the way through and it is it is very video gamey in terms of the way it's plotted but really enjoying the third season of this so far good opening episode i thought have you jumped back in yet yeah this is such a good show it's one of them ones as well where it's off for like a year and a bit and you don't forget about it it's in the back of your mind but you forget how good it's capable of being and then it comes back and you're like oh yeah of course this show is this good yeah this show also consistently proves you don't need longer episodes of tv to make good episodes of tv the opening episode is what 35 minutes as long as the content within your episode is good in fact in certain cases some of the worser episodes i've maybe seen of tv have been ones that are are too long because it's where you can run into pacing issues and you can really like suffocate the episode Mm -hmm. but um no, it, it's so great to see this Pedro Pascal. Again, it's a good time to be, well, I assume it's most of the time a, a good time to be Pedro Pascal. But um, <laughs> yes. yeah, with this and The Last of Us, because he got a little bit of overlap as well. So yeah. great to see him. Well, kind of see him back because he's, uh, he's <laughs> yes, under a helmet you here. don't really see him, but uh, that's sort of the whole point. But yes, yeah, no, I yeah. know exactly yeah, what you mean. It's interesting as well with Last of Us, he's escorting Ellie across the country and here he's trying to effectively do the same thing, but with a Baby Yoda Grogu character. <laughs> yes, yeah. So he, he's got to sort of do two fatherly sort of type of roles yeah absolutely it's been great seeing him this he's been phenomenal on the last of us as well we of course covering the last of us over on entertainment talk and me and matt that's been just superb it's a penultimate episode that goes out tonight because we're recording this on the monday although we have already both seen the episode in fact we've actually seen the both in the finale, I think, as well, though. But um, yeah, mm-hmm. it, phenomenal, phenomenal series just from start to finish. That has been absolutely brilliant. And if you've avoided it because you don't like zombie shows, go and watch it because it really, really, really isn't. There are such a minimal use of that. It just happens to be the sort of background environment that they are in is this pandemic, which happens to sort of zombify people. But there is so little use of that actually in the show. It's so much about this journey of Joel and Ellie. It's been absolutely outstanding. Third episode, particularly the episode that went out last week as well, which was the background to Ellie. Yeah, left behind. That was a wonderful episode as well. So, but they've, it's just been great throughout. It really has. Can't recommend mm-hmm. Last of Us highly enough. If you're looking at the show and thinking like, oh, is this some sort of Resident Evil type thing? It's very much the opposite of that. Yeah. Um, this is even like a lesser less zombie show than what The Walking Dead is. Yeah, yeah. Because The Last of Us is very much, it's a human drama in a zombie world, but it's yeah. very, very much layered with all the human storytelling parts. Yeah. Um, so yeah, if you're thinking like, oh, another zombie show where 50 zombies get shot in the head, it, it's the total opposite of that. So. Yeah. I think we went through and sort of looked at it and there's like this three, I think, major zombie set pieces throughout the entire series. And there was a, maybe mm. four, but there are a couple of little bits where they show up. But there's, there's only, I can only really think of three, possibly four bits where there are major zombie bits where the infected kind of show up en masse or even show up at all. I mean, there are entire episodes where you don't see a single infected person. It is so much about that story of Joel and Ellie. And it's just been a really wonderfully crafted drama. 
If you like good, solid drama, go and watch it. It is superb. But speaking of video game things, in terms of video games, I have been trying a few different things out because I was playing Anno 1800. That's a, a city building game. And I just, I was making like a ridiculous amount of money and built up all the cities to the point where I'm like, okay, I think I've done as much as I can at this point. On this, I'm just kind of moving things around now. So I'm going to go and stop and play something else. There was a game called One Military Camp, which just got released this week, which is a sort of city builder where, as the title suggests, you're running a a military camp. It's kind of in the style of Evil Genius, sort of mixed with Two point hospital, two point campus, that sort of setup. So you're hiring soldiers, training them to go on missions and to take back the country that is being taken over by these sort of evil people. And that side of it very much has the sort of storytelling and humor that is very much like the sort of evil genius setup. It's only in early access at the moment. If you like those sort of city builder games that have got a little bit of humor behind them, definitely worth picking that one up. It's fairly cheap as well at the moment because like I say it is in early access I think it's actually on sale on Steam at the moment but it's called One Military Camp certainly one to go and look at and uh, the other big city builder that they've announced this week City Skylines literally today they announced that City Skylines after eight years is getting a sequel and the sequel will be coming out Mm. later this year which is amazing news because that is a huge, brilliant SimCity, basically, game. It was the spiritual successor to SimCity, the current one. So the fact that they're releasing a second one and it's been eight years since they released the last one, it looks like it's going to... Some things take time. Well, yes, exactly. Apparently, I mean, (laughs) some of the um, people that do streams off City Skylines were playing around with the alpha of it two years ago. So it's been in development for at least two years. Obviously, it's been developed before then because they were playing the alpha then. I mean, obviously, they can't say what they were playing because they're all under NDAs. But, you know, he, the, the couple of the guys have said that they were invited to do some of the playtesting for it, which is wonderful because it means the community was involved. They were getting feedback from people that know the current game inside and out. And, yeah, we're asking what sort of things that they were looking for, what sort of controls they're looking for. Because the thing with the current game is it's a bit of a Frank Einstein's monster in the the base game is great but there is about 15 DLCs for it and you can also use the Steam Workshop to add items onto it so it ends up just being this bloated huge monstrosity of bits cobbled together and stuff so uh, there's things that didn't quite work that they need to fix you know that have been fixed by people in the workshop but you know hopefully that sort of stuff will get integrated directly into the main game and graphics upgrade as well engine upgrade it looks like it's possibly running unreal engine 5 so it's going to hopefully look gorgeous we haven't actually seen any gameplay footage of it the trailer that they released was had a big sort of not actual gameplay thing across the front of it but yeah i i think there's a lot of potential for that i'm very excited i might suspect it's gonna be the end of the year if it doesn't slip into next year but yeah i'm excited for that to come back that's very much my sort of game nice how do you like juggle the different building games that you play I will kind of get into one and play it obsessively for a number of weeks. Like my run on Anno this time around has been actually a couple of months. I probably been playing that. Oh, wow. I will get to a point where I'm like, okay, I think I've played this as much as I possibly can and got the cities to the point that I can. And Mm. I'll then put it down and then they'll release an update or then some new DLC comes back and I'll go back and play through it then i mean anno 1800 is a massive game as well with a whole ton of dlc for it that's a superb franchise as well so i tend to play one game obsessively for a length of time until i get to a point where okay i I think i've done as much as i can at the moment particularly if it's something that's in early access like satisfactory is the other thing that i jump back in and out of quite a lot i tend to jump back in when they release a new update for it and then i'll play it obsessively for like a month and then (laughs) leave it six months and then they'll release another update so cool there nice. you go. that's all the stuff we've been doing this week let's move on to some tv and film news 
So we kick off the TV and film news with the renewals, cancellations and pickups. There was one big cancellation announcement this week and it was Star Trek Discovery. Well, not cancellation. They are bringing it to an end, although it sounds like it probably was a cancellation. It will have a proper ending to it. They've actually going back because uh, most of the filming is actually complete on season five. But according to somebody who is involved with it, said there will be some additional filming that has yet to take place. So it sounds like that they maybe sort of finished it and then ended up going back to reshoot some stuff or add bits on to actually put a proper conclusion on it by the sounds of it. So that will be going and the final season, fifth and final season, will come in early 2024. So they've also bumped the date of it back a bit as well. I know you watched Discovery. Had you watched any of the others as well? I did watch season one of, was it Strange New Worlds? Yes. That one that was... uh... It was different. I, I thought it was quite good. I completely dropped off of Picard. I checked out a couple of episodes of Lower Decks. I, it just didn't really quite stick with me. I know there's the other animated series you were talking about the other week. Yeah, probably. Um, but I've not like jumped onto that. See, at the moment, just Discovery and and Strange New Worlds is the two that I was watching. I get you kind of sticking with those two because they are sort of connected. I'm very Mm. glad that Strange New Worlds is coming back because I I think that's a wonderful series and that feels very much to me like true Trek. You know, I love Discovery. I really enjoyed what they did with it and the future setting I find quite interesting, but it's very different to a lot of the other Trek stuff, which is fine. But what I love about Strange New Worlds is it very much feels in the the spirit of the original that is the show which is the spiritual successor to the original series really in the modern day i mean obviously there's next generation and all that sort of stuff but certainly that's the show that feels the most trek to me lower decks Mm. i really enjoy prodigy i really have fun with and uh, i've got to go back and watch some more of that but yes i'm i think prodigy has a lot of potential to be a really fun little series that and very much a family viewing show just on discovery i've really loved the show definitely i do think the newest season was the worst one when i think about that season finale and like how they explained what had gone on in that um, I was, uh, that wasn't very good, but you know, you come back and you try again with the fifth season. I really love a lot of those characters. We'll see what happens to those. If I don't know if those show up in, in another show, cause I read the headline of like, oh, you know, finishing off to the fifth season. I thought, okay, it's good that it's being labeled as a final season. Mm-hmm. It does feel like, okay, this is probably a show that was supposed to last a couple of more seasons than that. Yeah. It's disappointing as getting cut kind of short, but at least if it seems like they're getting the opportunity to wrap things up, it's a bit of a shame, but we'll see what happens from there. But but um, the, the Section 31 show, I've, ever since the, the idea of that was pitched, and obviously Michelle Yeoh's character had kind of moved over, mm-hmm. uh, I've been really looking forward to seeing what that was going to be like. Because I really her character in Discovery was amazing. And I remember when, what season did she leave? Was it three or four or something? Three, and I, um, I remember thinking, okay, she she's such like a big presence in the show. How are you going to kind of, mm-hmm. not that the show would like completely tank after she's left, but you know, when you lose a big character like that, and she's not a shy character, either she's not one that sort of like stands in scene she very much like dominates the screen i think the show got on okay without her but i'm very much looking forward to that kind of being the next thing after discovery yeah Um, well i'm looking forward to that i mean do we know if that tyler character is on the show because he left and sort of just disappeared as well we don't at the moment and we don't actually know what the situation is with those series because there are two things that have been Been talked about for a long while one is the section 31 series with michelle yo michelle who's possibly about to win an Oscar and that could be an issue moving forward because Mm -hmm. it's going to very much come down to whether Michelle Yeoh wants to do the show and whether they then do it as a limited run or whether they expand it out so she's only part of it. I don't know. That may cause issues because if she's an Oscar winner, that's going to push potentially her price tag up unless she's prepared to do it for less money. We'll see what happens with that and she's also obviously been very, very busy so she's in demand. Yeah. We'll have to see whether that section 31 show ever actually materializes the other thing that they are talking about and has been talked about a lot was a starfleet academy series which there was one that was being devised by stephanie savage and josh schwartz who have done things like gossip girl and runaways they're pretty much experts at teen drama there is some speculation that with discovery finishing that that show 
might be set in the discovery time frame rather than being in next generation or back in the strange new world's original time frame because they've set up cadets and there's this sort of rebuilding of starfleet going on and they've also set up tilly as an instructor at starfleet academy i mean we had a, almost an entire episode which was tilly and the cadets in the last season so there is the possibility that maybe that is what they're looking at for the Starfleet Academy, but we don't know anything further about that. Both the news on both those shows has been very, very quiet. Is this Picard's last season? Yes, this is Picard's last season. So you're basically down to one live action show, which is Strange New Worlds, and two animated shows in Lower Decks and Prodigy. You'd think they're probably mm. going to bring at least one live action show back. I mean, the other possibility is you get some spin-off from the Picard stuff because they've been introducing new characters in there. There is the potential to set up something with Seven of Nine and the Titan. You've got Ed Spliers in there playing Jack Crusher. He was on Downton as a character called Jimmy and he played Stephen Bonnet in Outlanders, but he's on the latest season as Jack Crusher and he's quite a likable character and has that sort of Kirkness about him. So there is mm. potential to maybe set up something that's set around the Titan with them involved possibly in some way. The other possibility is you follow some, you know, you do a Riker series because I don't think they're going to do any, any more Picard. They were making noises about it. Well, it's the final season, but you know, if this blows the doors off, who knows? But I rather suspect that even if it does, you're not going to get Patrick Stewart to come back and do another one. He may just do guest spots and you actually follow other characters and do it that way there is potential for other things and I, with them having two things coming to an end i suspect you're going to get an announcement at some point of another live action series as to what that is is anybody's mm. guess if it's not the tilly idea that you spoke about which i, I would like that because i like tilly as a character mm -hmm. you do still have quite a few because like with walking dead you've got like what 20 30 characters and you spin off obviously pairs of them into different shows i'm kind of wondering because there is still so many characters in discovery if you maybe pick a pair of those or like a couple of pairs of those like with hugh and Paul and Gray and Adira maybe you I don't know pick some of those or something and you do a spin off from those you, you could mm -hmm. kind of do the same Walking Dead idea when you take a couple of characters you maybe set those up for another spin off or something because yeah the, now, now that you, what you said with them being down to just one main show it'd be good if they, they announced some others because they're you know Paramount's going to keep doing Star Trek shows it's one of their big you main yeah. things that they've got so yeah it's one of their big as I, as I say flexible IPs I know there's a lot of budget cutting going on particularly with TV shows at the moment and I think part of that was they probably wanted to slim down the budgets on, on things a little bit and Discovery will be an expensive show to make because there's a lot of effects and they're five seasons in so and it's a full cast yeah, yeah. That, that stays from season to season so even if they're on a fixed contract for five seasons at some point those contracts are going to need to be renegotiated and their money's all going to have to go up so I think it, it will be weird to completely abandon that timeline and never see it again having established so much of it already I mean mm. the Starfleet Academy series set in that timeline would kind of make sense but yeah I mean we don't know at the moment there are lots of suggestions of what could happen we'll just have to wait and see mm. what they come up with. You, you spoke about the budget cutting thing. Does Paramount make that many things? That's I'm the just other wondering thing. about like where, their, where their money's going. That's that, what I'm, I'm thinking about. They have two big franchises, which basically is Star Trek and the Yellowstone franchise, which right, has yeah. grown into this huge monstrosity of a thing. Those are the kind of two big franchises. Plus, they also fund SEAL Team as well is under them. Evil is under them. So there's not that many shows that are specifically directly Paramount. I mean, there is the Showtime stuff as well, which they're now folding into Paramount, which, I mean, it is over here anyway, but they're folding that into Paramount in the US as well. So... Mm. Uh, yeah, we'll see what happens. Get Tom Cruise to make another Top Gun. That's another thing. Isn't <laughs> well, yes, yes, that, that would prop him <laughs> yeah. up, certainly. Moving on to other things, there are a couple of shows which aren't yet cancelled, but watch out for them. The Resident being one, which is not officially cancelled or renewed, and certainly the showrunner has said that they don't know either way at the moment. 
However, somebody did spot that there is a sale going on from one of the prop houses, and they appear to be selling off the residence sets and a bunch of their props. So that rather, oh. <laughs> rather looks like the we show need, probably yeah. isn't coming back, but there hasn't been an official... We need to film it from, somewhere. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, there is the possibility that they are only selling stuff from changing location. Maybe it's a character that's gone and they're selling off a bunch of their clothes and props that they used. But it did seem that they are selling off a lot of stuff and it was referred to as a liquidation sale so that sort oh. of sounds like they are probably not bringing the resident back and this will be the final season as i say it's not officially cancelled or renewed at the moment but it doesn't look great we should know by the end of april that's when all the cancellations and renewals come in but it's weird that they're selling stuff off but there's been no announcement from Fox about it. The other issue with The Resident is, I think it's into season six, and as I mentioned with Discovery, you start to get into those later seasons and the contracts come up for renegotiation, so they would have to renegotiate the contracts for the main cast, so that means that bill's going to be a lot higher. I don't think its numbers are huge, plus it's made by Disney and it's on Fox, so there's no advantage to them extending the season run either because... If mm -hmm. they don't, it's not theirs to sell on, it's Disney's. So there are a number of things going against it. I, I suspect might be correct that this could be the final season of The Resident, but we will wait and see what happens. The other one is La Brea, which it was announced as re renewed for a third season, and it is coming back for a third season, but it's only six episodes. So that seems likely that it's probably going to be the last one, although they will wrap up the story in those six episodes. Basically, there is a potential of a new writer's strike happening in the US, which, I mean, we all hope that doesn't happen, but it may do. If the writer's strike happens, they would only be able to probably make six episodes. And the problem that they have is the cast at the moment have to be paid for 10 episodes because that's what they're contracted for. So NBC went to the cast and said, look, we want to make six episodes. If you agree to take only the pay for the six episodes and not for 10, we'll release you from your contracts early. And they had agreed to release them from their contracts at the end of season three rather than at the end of season six, because like I say, they're usually in contract for five or six seasons. They're now free to leave and go and do other things. So even if it did come back for a full season, they'd have to renegotiate all the contracts again, which seems high highly unlikely. So as right. an agreement for them only being paid for six episodes, they get out of their contracts early and are free to be picked up for other things, other pilots. So it seems likely that that six episode season is going to be a final season for La Brea as well. So as somebody who watches the show, do you think it could like wrap up with a third season? Yeah, I mean, I don't see why not. I mean, we've only seen, what, seven episodes of the second season. There's another six or seven to go for that. So I don't see any reason why you couldn't necessarily wrap it up in six episodes in a final season. I mean, mm. they're 45 minute episodes, so that's enough time, I think, to be able to kind of pull a story together, I think. I mean, I don't know where the second season ends because we haven't seen those episodes yet, but I think you could probably do that. The thing with that sort of show where you're dealing with sci-fi and timey-wimey stuff, um, there's always a way. So I think it's possible. Cool. Moving on to the renewals, Prehistoric Planet, which was on Apple TV, has been renewed for a second season and apparently it's coming on the 22nd of May. So uh, it was obviously renewed a while ago, but uh, they just mm. haven't announced it. It's a thing from John Favreau, who's exec producer. It's a natural history series. It's kind of a walking with dinosaurs sort of thing narrated by David Attenborough. I've not seen any of that, but apparently... It went down well, so it's coming back for a second season. Young Offenders, which I think launched on BBC Three, is going to have a fourth season. That's going to be on BBC One and iPlayer. And there is a show called Crapopolis, which is an animated series from Dan Harmon. Season one hasn't even aired on Fox in the US, and they've just renewed it for a third season because it was, I think it was picked up for two seasons when they first ordered it. So they've now ordered a third as well. Don't know where that might land over here. It was actually that they're in the UK trying to sell it or international sales at the moment. So it may pop up somewhere, but uh, it's called Crapopolis and from Dan Harmon. That, it's now got three seasons definitely coming. Have we known about this show before? Because I, yes. I read these notes and that I don't remember hearing of its existence. We have mentioned it, I think, before. As I say, it's from Dan Harmon, who is the other half of the Rick and Morty guys. It's a show set in mythical ancient Greece and centers on a flawed family of humans, gods and monsters trying to run one of the world's first cities without killing each other. That's the setup for it. Hmm. Got some great names doing voices. It's Richard Ioardi. 
is one of the characters. Matt Berry's one. Hannah Waddington is one. Dove Cameron. Tara Strong, Will Fort is in there as well. So it's got some great names attached to it in terms of the voice cast. And, uh, you know, Dan Harmon's stuff is usually quite funny. Rick and Morty's co-creator of that. He did Community as well. The other thing that he's probably well known for. This is another animated series. Don't know where that'll land over here, but it is in international sales right now. Cool. In pickups and other news, there was a a little bit from uh, Mark Guggenheim, who is the co-creator of the Arrowverse who were slightly upset the fact that apparently nobody from the Gun Saffron New DC U camp gave them a call at any point, despite the fact that, you know, they've been the people that have been doing DC TV stuff for the last 10 years. He was talking in an interview and basically saying, just seems a little bit knocked the fact that, simply put, the Arrowverse hasn't led to any other gigs, so it feels, at least from a career level, that I wasted my time, was the quote that came out from him. You know, he said he loved working on it and it was all great and, and all that sort of stuff. But from a career point of view, it doesn't seem to have done anything. And he was a little bit knocked at the fact that Gun Saffron didn't actually even, you know, he's saying not give me a show. It just, they didn't even reach out and have a phone call or a conversation or anything, which little unfortunate. I, I mean, I, I think if I was going to Saffron, I probably would have at least sort of spoken to the guy, even if it was just to say, yeah, we got nothing for you. But you'd think they'd have a conversation with the Arrowverse people. It feels like... We- with this because we've seen sort of okay Peacemaker is going to stay around and some of these other like you know the creatures I can't remember the name of the thing but the creatures thing whatever it is and Weasel staying around and a few people have kind of pointed this out and I kind of agreed it does feel it makes sense but it feels weird the fact that okay yeah James Gunn's one of the new halves of the lead on DCU obviously Peter Safran's the other one of like, I'm going to keep all my stuff around and everything else is getting basically a fresh reboot. And okay, it makes sense because, of, you know, he's the head of DC. He's not going to say like, hey, Peacemaker's done or, or yeah. whatever. But And I've seen a few comments about like, oh, you're keeping the weasel around, but you don't want to bring Darkseid back. And like, we kept this character, but not these ones. And like, there's, there's a few kind of weird feelings around all of that. So I kind yeah. of... I kind of I kind of get what saying about hey you didn't even sort of contact me for anything yeah so yeah I kind of understand that yeah I mean he did say you know he's not looking for a job just a meeting a conversation a little bit of recognition for like the fact that he'd been like toiling away on DC shows for the past ten years would have been quite nice and I I do kind of get that and I know with what people are saying about yes the setup of yes he. Gunn, of course, have kept all his own stuff and then thrown a lot of stuff out. He did actually say today that it's less than half of what he announced is less than half of what's coming in phase one. So there's still a whole bunch more stuff to come in phase one of that as well. So, I mean, you never know. Some of this stuff may pop back up again, but yeah. Over on the BBC, they have ordered a documentary which tells the true story behind the hit drama The Gold, which has been going down quite well. You can find the whole of that on iPlayer. This is about a thing called the Brinks Mapped Robbery, which basically a bunch of thieves broke into this uh, building and ended up accidentally finding a bunch of gold and then were having to try and find a way of uh, hawking it. It was one of the biggest robberies, if not the biggest robbery in history, to the point that basically if you bought anything with any gold in in the UK, even now, chances are some of the Brinks Mac gold is in it. So (laughs) it was a ridiculous amount of gold that they just happened to stumble across. They've a thing called The Gold, The Inside Story. They've ordered, there's a documentary which tells the actual true story about like the thing that they dramatised for the gold, the drama series. Also on the BBC, Mrs. Brown's Boys is coming back for a new four-part miniseries, as if the UK hasn't suffered enough. So <laughs> that will be returning for if you like that sort of thing. I did used to like it. I watched the first season and a half. I watched the film as well. And then I, I kept watching a bit more of it. And then it just drifted away. I saw like this is going to come back for another bit. And I just saw so many comments about sort of why do you keep doing more of it sort yeah. of thing. It doesn't seem to be very popular right now. Have you ever seen any of this? I've seen little bits of it. That's about it. It's just not my sort of thing. Yeah. Over on Prime Video, we've got a date for Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. That's coming on the 14th of April, and that's the fifth and final season of that. So it's launching on the 14th with three episodes, and then the rest of the nine-episode series will be airing weekly. 
There was a little bit of news from Theo Rossi, who was one of the cast of Sons of Anarchy. He was also in Luke Cage as well. But he, he we stress this may or may not happen, but apparently there is some discussion about them all coming back together to do something. That was all he would say. But it's weird because if you've ever seen any of those guys interviewed, they all talk to each other all the time. I mean, that, that biker gang that was Sons of Anarchy are still a very close-knit group and they talk to each other all the time. And, nice. you know, it's it's really sweet that they're all still so close to each other but there is some talk apparently about them potentially coming back and doing something else for that which would be awesome because our sons of anarchy was a great series it was what could that be though uh, well yes i know because <laughs> it, certain characters including theo rossi's character aren't available let's say at this point so whether it would be some sort of bit where they brought any everybody back and slotted it somewhere back in the timeline maybe or I, I don't know Are there any time skips in there that I I do not I, I, about? not that I particularly remember but maybe there was something Think that they could come together. Maybe it's a movie or which fills in a hole. And this, is, and this is like a panel reunion thing. Yeah, well, that maybe. Doesn't quite sound like what this is. Yeah. Yeah, maybe. Um, maybe. So. Otherwise, um, I have no idea how you do that. <laughs> yeah, no, I, I have no idea either. But um, yes, I mean, it would be awesome if they can come up with something. Billions have got some new information on that this week that uh, Damien Lewis is returning for six of the 12 episodes of season seven, which is kind of interesting because he left uh, not last season, season before. And uh, he's apparently going to be back as Bobby Axelrod. What does make this kind of interesting is a couple of weeks ago, we mentioned that there are some Billions spin-offs in the works. Billions Miami, Billions London, Millions and Trillions. So they're turning it into a big sort of franchise. What kind of makes this intriguing is I do wonder whether they're going to set this up as Axe running something in London and that will be the basis for Billions London possibly hmm. I mean don't know whether that is the case this is pure conjecture but there is the possibility than that because essentially the reason that Damien Lewis left was because his wife who was the wonderful force of nature that was Helen McCrory passed away in 2021 and obviously at that point he's got quite a young family he wanted to make sure that he was staying around the UK because Billions took him away to America for a large period of time so he wanted to be around hmm. his family and his kids and and, and you know, be home for them. The advantage of this will be it would be billions. It would be him playing acts, but it could be that they actually spin that off into the London series, or it has some effect on the billions London. We'll see. I don't know anything about whether that is what they're doing or not, or whether he's just going to be guest starring in six episodes and that'll be it. We don't know at all, but we do know that some of it that it was shot in London. The stuff, so we know that the character of Axe is in London. We'll sit, wait and see what happens with that. But uh, it's a great show, that, and I'm glad to see Damien Lewis coming back in. There's also a couple of Apple series, which uh, one has actually got an air date and actually got a trailer up on the website today. The other one is the thing that's been ordered. It's called The Last Frontier, the one that's been ordered. It stars Jason Clark. It's from John Brogenkamp and Richard de Olivo. It stars Clark as a US Marshal who is in charge of Alaska's quiet and rugged barons when his jurisdiction is turned upside down when a prison transport plane crashes into the remote wilderness, setting free dozens of violent inmates. Tasked with protecting the town, he's vowed to keep safe. He begins to suspect the crash wasn't an accident, but the first step of a well-crafted plan with international political implication. It's interesting because Jason Clark's one of those faces that you see and go, I know that face from somewhere and I can't remember <laughs> where. He's been in things like Winning Time, Rise of the Lake of Dynasty most recently. He's in Oppenheimer, the upcoming Chris Nolan film. Been in Catherine the Great, Chicago Code. He was in Home and Away. He is Australian. Zero Dark Thirty, Mudbound, Pet Cemetery. He was John Connor in Terminator, Regenesis. White House Down, First Man. So he's, he's popped up in a bunch of films. So he's one of those faces that you'll know from like, oh yeah, he was in that. Decent actor, be a good lead. I love The Blacklist. And those guys created a great show in The Blacklist, which of course is coming to an end. So I think this sounds like it could be quite interesting. A big sort of action adventure thing set in the wastelands of Alaska. That sounds like an interesting song, but it's called The Last Frontier. I don't know when that's landing, but I think that one sounds interesting. Is that the one that you put the trailer up for? No, there's no trailer for that one yet because that was announced last week. The one that the trailer's gone up for is called Silo, which again has a kind of fallouty vibe to it, actually. Silo is the story of the last 10,000 people on Earth, their mile deep home protecting them from the toxic and deadly 
deadly world outside. However, no one knows when or why the silo was built, and anyone who tries to find out faces fatal consequences. Rebecca Ferguson, who you might know from things like June and the Mission Impossible films, stars as Juliet, an engineer who seeks answers about a loved one's murder and tumbles into a mystery that goes far deeper than she could have ever imagined, leading her to discover that if the lies don't kill you, the truth will. That's got a trailer for it. It looks really kind of interesting. It does sound somewhat Fallout, but uh, it's premiering on the 5th of May, that on Apple TV. It's based on a series of novels by Hugh Howey, and it's from Graham Yost, who is a really good film writer. He's Emmy nominated. He did Band of Brothers and Justified. Solid, interesting team behind it. There's some other really good names in the cast for that as well, but uh, it's called Silo, 5th of May. That'll be on Apple TV. That's the one that the trailer went up for. Cool. Um, yeah, both of these sound like they've got some promise to them. It's Apple TV+, Plus, and if you're trying to pitch me a show and you tell me that's on, on Apple TV+, Plus, I automatically think it's probably going to be good because all of the shows I've seen on there have at least been good. So yes. um, I kind of like these sort of, you know, wastelandy, post-apocalyptic sort of type of things, um, even as much as uh, C and like the point that was set in and, and that kind of setting and everything. So yeah, both of these sound like they, they could be quite interesting. I didn't see the trailer for this. What's the, the trailer sort of like? The trailer, it is actually only a teaser, so it doesn't give you like a whole lot, but it does show a bit okay. of sort of inside the silo and the silo does look very kind of vault-like <laughs> you know so mm. yeah I mean there, it's interesting that you know Apple have got two shows which take different aspects of Fallout world and there is a Fallout series in development as well but that's mm. on Amazon so yeah I mean I I didn't know anything about this until that trailer dropped I read completely a bypass me but yes that looks like it's it's going to be quite good and uh, somebody did respond saying oh well, I love the novel series so yeah I mean I think that's going to be one to look out for uh, the novel series is called The Wool Saga apparently I wonder if we'll get into like an era of these types of shows. Like we just had the one that I mentioned at the start, Fallout's coming out, this is coming out. Because I remember when sort of like Game of Thrones was coming to an end and we had like Rings of Power coming out and The Witcher and all the, all these other yeah. kind of stuff. So sometimes you do get trends like that, but it, it could be interesting to see everybody sort of take their own stab at it if you yeah. want. I mean, it's interesting because we went through the pilots, was it last week or the week before? And the network TV seems to have abandoned all the sci-fi stuff. And I think part of the reason mm. is it's expensive to produce and the people that have the money to be able to do it and do it well are the streaming services are Apple TV are Prime Video are Netflix those are the people that can throw the money at it as I say there's cost cutting across the board right now particularly for network TV and I think part of them is like we'll stick with procedurals we know they sell we're going to carry on doing that <laughs> and we'll leave all the kind of really complicated like stuff to Disney to Amazon to Apple you know the ones with the bigger budget yeah, yeah the one with the bigger budget and that's fine by me you know no, I'm happy. I'd rather see high quality sci-fi than low quality sci-fi, you know, so great. Mm. One of the things that has been picked up and ordered by the BBC is a thing called Men Up, which is from Matthew Barry, who wrote on Industry in the Chilling Adventures of Sabrina. It's actually exec produced by Russell T. Davis and Nicola Schindler, who are the people obviously behind It's a Sin and Nolly, um, those guys. Matthew did actually work with them previously on the, do you remember that thing that a banana cucumber tofu thing that they oh, yeah. did for Channel 4. He wrote yeah, the banana one good. for that. Men Up is about the creation of Viagra, which apparently it's it's one of those lovely little weird bits of British history sorry I should say because it was in Swansea Morriston Hospital in 1994 it was where all the trials for Viagra were done apparently it's following a group of guys and their experiences about that and it's a drama based around that so yeah really really kind of very much in that kind of wheeled house I think of those weird little bits of British history that RTD picks up so well and produces so well so uh, Matthew Barry is a great writer the cast is uh, Yuan Rion, who you'll know from Game of Thrones, Stefan Rohde from House of the Dragon and Temple, Paul Reese from Discovery of Witches and Relic, Faldut Sharma from Sherwood, Mark Lewis Jones from Gangs of London, a whole bunch of other people in there as well. It's, it's so decent, solid cast for it. Really good writer behind it. 
interesting kind of weird little bit of British history, but coming to the BBC, don't know when that's going to air, but they have ordered it. The core idea of it doesn't sound as interesting as some of the, the other things here, yes. but the people that are working on this thing could make it better than what it otherwise possibly would be. Yes, it's that sort of thing. It's a bit like Nolly. I mean, Nolly is a really odd thing to pick up in, you know, the sort of rise and fall of this soap legend, basically. But it's brilliant. I mean, it's a really, really well-written piece of drama. Uh, that's on ITVX if you haven't caught that yet. You can go watch that for free on ITVX. That's a great piece of drama from Russell T. Davis, And it's those sort of odd little bits of British history that he kind of pulls out and, and been writing about, you know. And I mean, It's a Sin, of course, is a similar kind of thing, although you know, much darker in what it was discussing. But I, mm, I, I think... important. Yeah. yeah, and extremely important. And I mean, he's an absolutely outstanding piece of drama. So yeah, I'm really quite intrigued by this. I think it's an interesting thing to, to pick up. The other little bit of news we've got was for, apparently, there is a new Hellboy movie coming called Hellboy the Crooked Man, which, I mean, might surprise you, given the fact that the last Hellboy movie with David Harbour, let's say, didn't do particularly well. This one is from the same production company as Millennium, but it's going to have a different person playing Hellboy. It's going to be a guy called Jack Kessie, who you might not recognise him that much, but uh, there was a guy a character called Black Tom in Deadpool 2 who he played. He's also been in a movie called 12 Strong. He was in the Baywatch movie. He was regular on the TV series Claws. And uh, the only thing I could, I've actually seen him in, I think he played the master in The Strain, which was that sort of vampire series. But that's the only thing I really know him from. So that was under a certain amount of makeup. I mean, not the level that you have to wear to be Hellboy, but yes. I mean, so he's taking over the lead role. The movie sees Hellboy stranded in 1950s rural Appalachia with a rookie BPRD agent. They discover a small community haunted by witches led by a local devil with a troubling connection to Hellboy's past, The Crooked Man. It is based on an actual direct comic book. It's not sort of some mishmash of things. It's based on a direct comic book. And the person that is writing it this time around is Mike Mignola, who is the creator of the comic book. So the one thing this does have going for it is the fact that it's based on a known piece of work and it's being adapted by the person that wrote it. So if anybody's going to create an authentic version of Hellboy, it really should be this. You know, <laughs> this should, in theory, be the thing that actually works. Brian Taylor is the person that's directing it who is probably best known for in the movie side for the Jason Statham crank films, which is maybe not the best thing to put on your CV. But he also did Brave New World as well. And uh, he wrote and directed a number of episodes of Happy, which was wonderfully bonkers as well. That's the person that is taking over the role. It's uh, Jack Kessie. They also announced Jefferson White, who is in Yellowstone and Blindspot, is playing Tom Farrell and Adeline Rudolph, who was in Chilling Adventures of Sabrina as Agatha and was in Resident Evil, the short-lived Netflix series, is playing a character called Bobby Joe Song. I don't know much about those characters characters other than their names. Do you want a new Hellboy movie? I don't know whether you saw the last one. I missed the David Harbour one. The idea of Hellboy is sort of interesting. I think I saw the Ron Perlman films. I didn't get around to seeing the David Harbour ones, or the one, one. I should say. Yes. But I remember when David Harbour was cast, and I sort of looked at him and looked at Ron per Perlman, and I thought, okay, David Harbour will be should be quite a good follow-up. And I don't know how good David's acting in, in that film was, because I never actually saw it, but that sounded like something that should have worked. I think I saw like, a couple of the trailers for, for that, and it looked all right. But yeah, as you say, the person that sort of originally did this or whatever coming back should work quite well. We'll see. I guess it's a case of, you know, what do you do if this doesn't work? Well, yeah. But people I've heard discussing this are, are excited about the idea of it, but it's going to have to be a wait and see kind of thing. And there is actually a Hellboy game coming out as well, which got, right, yeah. I think the, the Game Awards that just went, so the ones from three months ago, it got sort of a one minute trailer okay. at the Game Awards. And a few people said that the gameplay looked a bit strange, which I, I think it did. So there's potential with the character. I think you just have to get the right people yeah. on it and the right cast member to, to play Hellboy. So um, how about you? I watched the first two movies. I like the Del Toro movies, the ones that Ron Perlman did. I really like those. They were really good films. Uh, certainly the first one, the second one wasn't quite as strong, but really good films. And Ron Perlman was absolutely superb in that role. I didn't see the David Harbour one. I should go and 
look it up really and see what it is actually like because mm. yeah, I'm sure it'd be kicking around on one of the streaming services. I don't know. I mean, I it's not a comic that I particularly read, so I don't know the character much outside the movies, but I, I do like the fact that at least with this, it's not some original story that somebody's cooked up. It is a well-known work and it's being written by the guy that created Hellboy in the first place. So I think those things sort of are really strong for it, I think. As I say, I don't know Jack Kersey particularly well. I have seen him in a couple of things. Brian Taylor is a director. I mean, he's done a number of comic book adaptations as well. I mean, like I say, Brave New World, Happy, a couple of his other movies. I think he did one of the Ghost Rider movies as well with Nick Cage and... He did Jonah Hex, Mm. neither of which were great films, but I mean, so I don't know. We'll see with that, but uh, don't know when that's coming out, but that is coming. Hellboy the Crooked Man. So why didn't they do a third Ron Perlman film? The problem was that they were going to do the last Hellboy movie and Del Toro wasn't offered the role of director or writer on it. I think he was supposed to be connected in some way, but they didn't like out and out offer him director and writing credit for it. And Perlman basically said, well, if Del Toro is not doing it, I'm not doing it. So Uh... that was basically why it ended up. And I think partly because of that, I think that was sort of some bad will towards that film as well. So we'll see with this. And if you can't get Del Toro and you can't get Perlman to come back, I think having Mike Minella there at least gives it a reasonable stamp of approval, you know? So yeah, yeah. that's all the news we've got for this week. Just some times for some highlights for next week on TV. So, highlights for next week. We have Grey's Anatomy returning for the second half of his 19th season. That will be on the 8th of March. And, of course, that comes along with the second half of the 6th season of Station 19, also on the 8th of March, both of those on Disney+. Plus. The Bay returns for its fourth season. That's on ITV. That is on the 8th of March at 9pm. And SEAL Team also returns on the 8th of March. That is going to be back on Sky Max for its sixth season. That's at 10 p.m. So I'm very glad that that's coming back and it'll be on Sky Max and not moved over onto Paramount+. Plus. What is on Paramount+, Plus is a thing called School Spirits. This is a new show, stars Peyton List as a teen girl stuck in the afterlife investigating her mysterious disappearance. That comes on the 10th of March. Over on Netflix, you've got a number of things starting. You, he's back for season four, part two. That comes on the 9th of March. And then on the 10th of March, you've got Luther, the Fallen Son, which is a movie. It has Idris Elba back as the unhinged and unconventional detective in a feature. So uh, that I'm very much looking forward to because Luther was a great series. So that's 10th of March on Netflix. Over on the Rock 2 channel, we've got Most Dangerous Game at New York, which is sort of season two, but I suspect is probably more of a film. That is Christoph Waltz back as the man who organises hunts across the city for the most dangerous prey there is, people with nothing to lose. First season of that was a Quibi series and then got kind of turned into a movie, which you can find on Prime. The second thing i mean we've got it to season two but i think it's probably a film but uh that is coming onto the rocky channel on the 10th of march and the rocky channel you can find on now and sky you have access to it the oscars is this week as well that's coming on the 13th of march at midnight that lands on sky showcase and on the 14th of march at 10 p.m on dave alan davis as yet untitled that chat show comes back for a seventh series so you can catch that over there that is everything coming up on the next week on tv if people want to find more of you where can they find you find me over on entertainmenttalk.org or if you search for that name on your favorite podcast platform we do tv games films may night podcast uh, we recently talked about the uh, suicide squad gameplay demo the very very underwhelming gameplay demo uh, which was the general consensus that me and robert sort of agreed with uh, so we needed like a state of play recently talked about what's going on with cod some of it good some of it very bad and confusing of course, we're doing The Last of Us over there. Had a, a couple of analyzing television episodes, one where I talked about old TV shows and representation and diversity. One which I called Dear Netflix, Please Stop. That will be explained in why I call it that in the podcast. It's basically a breakdown of recent decisions that Netflix has made. Uh, the main focus being on what, what's going on with Mindhunter. Yes. And how just all of it doesn't really make much sense. So I talked about all that. Yeah, main I podcast as well. I uh, recently won a trophy, which is really, really good. Uh, last weekend, we um, won the Carabao Cup against New castle so that 
that was really, really good. And um, we're in an FA Cup quarter final. We're still in the Europa League. So, um, season's no, no, going no, nothing quite else, well. Nothing else you from yesterday. want to mention. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't wonder whether you were just going to brush over that, yeah. that, that 7 0 defeat. Yeah. But, you know. Uh, I, I, I imagine uh, Eric Ten Hag got them running today, <laughs> I, I, I would imagine. Yes, so, yes. Um, Woke them up with something. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. I, that was a very strange game of football to watch. I, I, I can I'll, imagine uh, it was. Yeah, I mean, you know, I'll I don't massively that. do football, but but yeah, I mean, even I saw that result. It was like 7 0. Wow. So you can catch Matt over on there for Entertainment Talk and uh, all those podcasts he just mentioned. Uh, that's entertainmenttalk.org. For other people involved in the show, you can find Bex at twitch.tv forward slash Trista Bytes. She's uh, streaming every week, so go and check over there for her schedule. That's B-Y-T-E-S for uh, Bytes. Great fun over there. Go and check her out. And uh, Daryl, you can find at hollywoodnorthnews.net for all those TV series that you love, which are shot in Canada. If you want to get in touch with us, you can find us at geektown.co.uk throughout the week and see all the latest air date information. If you want to get in touch with your questions or comments, email us on podcast at geektown.co.uk. Leave a message on the website post. Find us at Geektown on Twitter, on Facebook at facebook.com forward slash geektown, on YouTube at youtube.com forward slash geektown, and on Instagram at geektown UK. That is everything. We shall see you next week. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.